Before you get started working with workflows in Striven, you'll need to ensure that your user role includes the proper permissions. There are three new permissions related to workflow management in this release. Workflow Add provides the ability to add new workflows in Striven. Workflows Manage All provides a superpower to view and manage all workflows in Striven. Workflow View All provides the ability to view all workflows, but you can only take actions on your own workflows. Once you've determined your user role has the required permissions, you can locate a link to the Workflow Queue page under the Customers, Vendors, Projects, and Task menus in the Striven Navigation menu bar at the top of the screen. Clicking on the link from any of these menus will bring you to the same Workflow Queue page, which will provide options to search workflows by name, manager, based on, action type, or status. This is where you'll also find the options to manage workflows or view the workflow action log. The steps for creating a workflow are straightforward and should be easy to follow. To begin, click on the Manage Workflows button from the Workflows Queue page, which will navigate you to the Workflow Management page. From there, click the Add Workflow button to determine the configuration settings for your workflow. This is where you'll name your workflow, set the managers of the workflow, and provide access to the workflow for any employees you wish to have access. There will also be an option to copy from an existing workflow in the top right corner of the Add Workflow page. Click the Proceed button to continue, which will navigate you to the Workflow Info page, wherein you can see the info settings you set when creating the workflow, as well as edit or copy them. Triggers define a set of rules when something qualifies to be part of a workflow. The rules are defined as search filters in the next step. To add a trigger to your workflow, click the Add Trigger button. Name your trigger and then select the entity which the trigger will be based on, such as customers, vendors, sales orders, opportunities, projects, or tasks, and then click Next. In the next step, you'll choose the search filters to use for your trigger from the drop-down menus. Once all your search criteria are selected, click Save. The Workflow Info page will display again with the trigger you just created. Keep in mind that workflows can have multiple triggers each with different search criteria defined. Next, you'll want to add an action to your trigger. Clicking on the Add Action button will open a pop-up window with fields to fill in for the following. Action Type, which offers the options for Send Email, Send Text, Send Discussion, or Create Task. Send On offers the options for Day Number, Fixed Date, Fixed Day, Start Date, due date, or done date. Different configuration options can be set depending on which send option is selected. Two offers the options for primary contact, contacts filtered by category, one or more employees, customer level assignment employee, anonymous email, requested by, or task assigned to employees. Depending on which action type is selected, the body field will have a different name, but will serve as basically the same thing. An editor field wherein you can type information related to the action, including bulleted or numbered lists, links, and tables. You may also choose to insert merge fields from the drop-down list to auto-populate particular details in this field, depending on the entity the trigger was based on, such as customers, vendors, etc. Other field options may become available depending on the action type selected, such as from, subject, message type, etc. If you wish to automate this trigger and action configuration, you can check the Send Automatically box. This will perform the action at the processing times automatically. If you leave the box unchecked, the actions will be put into the workflow queue, and the next steps would need to be performed from the queue. Once you've filled in all the fields required for the action, Click Save to complete the setup. Triggers need to be marked as published in order to run. There are two requirements for marking triggers as published. An action needs to be defined for the trigger, and a processing time needs to be set for the action. You can set the processing time by either clicking on the checkbox to mark as published, or you can select the option to set processing time from the trigger kebab menu. 
Workflow jobs execute six times every day. By checking the corresponding box, you can choose from the following times for your workflow to process. 3 a.m., 7 a.m., 11 a.m., 3 p.m., 7 p.m., or 11 p.m., all in Eastern Standard Time. Click Save and Publish once you've selected the time or times you wish your triggers to be processed. This will cause a pop-up window to appear that will display the current search results from your trigger and will ask if you want to publish the trigger in this workflow. Click Yes to continue. Other available trigger kebab menu options include View Current Record Count, which shows how many results meet the trigger at the present time, and which will be sent at the next processing time that's set. Copy Trigger allows you to copy a trigger to the same workflow or to another workflow. Process Log shows the process log for that particular trigger. And Remove Trigger removes the trigger from the workflow, canceling all pending or unprocessed actions for the trigger. If the user role includes the Trigger Templates Manage permission, you can add a trigger template to your Striven system. From the Workflow Trigger Templates page, you can click on the Add button to open a pop-up for Step 1, Trigger Information. Enter the trigger info the same as when you created the trigger within your workflow by entering a trigger name and select what you wish the trigger to be based on, then click Next. For Step 2, define the filters for the trigger, select the search options you wish to include in this trigger template, and click Save to keep the template so you can then select it from a drop-down list when creating a new workflow or adding triggers to an existing workflow. Now that you know how to set up and manage the triggers and actions of your workflows, you can move on to the next video to learn how to manually process, snooze, or skip actions from the workflow queue, and search or review all actions through the workflow action log.